Ah, dear. The ship's sinking. It was my fault. I know what I have to do. Does the captain always have to go down with the ship? Can you go down with the ship and survive? We're gonna have a look at some maritime disasters and see what the captains did. I'm Brian Pilchard and I love history. Using my skills in effects, clothes and disguises, I'm gonna take you on a journey back in time for an adventure in Super History! 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 Going down with the ship is heavily related to being the last person on board in the case of a maritime emergency. The idea is that the captain is responsible for the lives on the ship and must do everything they can to protect the passengers. It's heavily associated with the Titanic and passenger ships. However, it took on a slightly different form during wartime. The most famous example of going down with the ship is Edward Smith of the Titanic, his heroic action being immortalised in several feature films. Although depictions show him going down in the wheelhouse, there is some debate whether or not he was spotted swimming off of the ship. The first recorded instance of the captain going down with the ship was in, oh, nah, I couldn't find that out. But the social concept started in the Victorian era, around the time of the sinking of the Birkenhead. To ensure the lifeboats that were loaded with the women and children were not swamped, the soldiers stood in their position and went down with the ship, and so did her captain, Captain Robert Salmond. Why wasn't I in your last video? An early example would be Captain Luce in the SS Arctic disaster. He'd decided that the fate of the ship would be his own. As the ship sank, he was pulled far down. However, he floated back to the top and survived the sinking. A few years later, on September 12, 1857, Commander William Lewis Herndon chose the classic approach of standing next to the wheelhouse as his ship, the SS Central America, sunk in a hurricane. There were also plenty of incidences where the captain was not the first to leave, and they didn't make sure that the passengers were okay. In 1880, a storm struck the SS Jeddah. The captain and crew abandoned the ship, leaving its passengers behind. They thought the ship would sink, but three days later, the ship was found with all of the passengers alive. The incident is used in Joseph Conrad's Lord Jim. I was gonna do a Lord Jim sketch, but no one's seen it and uh, just wouldn't be worth the effort. In the case of the SS Sirio, it was mentioned in a newspaper that the captain was the first person to leave. This was a brutal disaster, which had passengers fighting with knives over lifeboats. In a more recent passenger ship disaster, the captain of the cruise ship Costa Concordia abandoned ship before the passengers. The Costa Concordia captain was sentenced to 10 years for multiple manslaughter, 5 years for causing a shipwreck and 1 year for abandoning his passengers. In the captain's defence, he didn't get in the lifeboat, he fell in the lifeboat. <laughs> a very early example of a captain leaving a passenger ship during a disaster would be the French frigate Medusa in 1816. The frigate was carrying less armaments, so more passengers could be carried on board. The ship was captained by the incompetent Hughes de Roy de Chamurais. 
Well, you butchered that pronunciation. The Medusa ran aground off the coast of Africa. As there weren't enough lifeboats, a raft was made 20 by 7 metres long. All the important people, like the ship's crew and politicians, were put into the lifeboats, and the rest were put onto the raft. 146 men and one woman were put on the raft. The lifeboats towed the raft. However, it didn't go well. From fear of being overrun by the passengers of the raft, a decision was made. Conditions on the raft deteriorated quickly. Rations were scarce. Passengers resorted to cannibalism and suicide. Out of the 146 men and one woman, only 15 men survived, and they were rescued by a brig named the Argus, which encountered them by pure chance. During war, it was more acceptable for the captain to survive. The cause of the sinking was usually due to a third party. For an example, during World War I, the Lusitania, it was a passenger ship torpedoed by a German U-boat. Captain William Turner, who did all he could during the fast sinking, was found after the sinking floating unconscious. I'm not doing any more pool footage. The pool didn't have any heating. I got hypothermia during the last lot. Although optional, some captains decided to go down with the ship. A notable example would be Captain John P. Cromwell. In World War II, he was commanding a submarine wolf pack from the submarine USS Sculpin. They were in a depth charge battle with the Japanese destroyer Yamagumo. The Sculpin was badly damaged. It was decided for her to be scuttled. Scuttling is when they sink the ship on purpose. Captain Cromwell knew a lot of details to top secret information. Instead of being captured and interrogated for the information, Captain Cromwell decided to go down with the ship. No, I won't be talking to the Japanese. During World War II, the Japanese embraced going down with the ship. It fit in with their code to never live to experience shame as a prisoner. A notable example being Rear Admiral Taman Yamaguchi at the Battle of Midway. He was last seen with Captain Kaku waving to the crew members who were abandoning ship. Beats the hell out of Supaku. During war, there were also examples of captains leaving the ship first. In World War II, German U-boat commander Hugo Forster surrendered himself to a Canadian corvette after his submarine, U-501, surfaced beside her. However, the first officer took over and had the U-boat scuttled. <laughs> oh, they're off. So, does the captain always have to go down with the ship? Yes and no. Look, if the ship goes down and you're in charge, just put some effort in. Thanks. Oh, and uh, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and if you're a patron, thank you for helping us produce this video. Thanks. Oh, glad that video's over. What a depressing topic. Are you okay, Stu? Stu McConaughey's the name and history's the game. I just saw your video on going down with the ship and it was bloody crap. For a start, the captain of the Birkenhead's coat was completely wrong. That was a Napoleonic coat. Thanks, Stu. I was worried I'd look stupid. 
and the French Navyman's coat was an infantryman's coat. Thanks, Stu. And you could have mentioned a bunch of other captains, like Captain Deng Shi Chang at the Battle of Yalu River. He went down with the ship after it was struck by a Japanese shell, causing a massive explosion. Oh yeah, that would have been interesting, Stu. Also, Vice Admiral Stepan Makarov of the Imperial Russian Navy, his ship was also hit by the Japanese, and he went down with his ship at the Siege of Port Arthur. Yeah, that would have been good. There should have also been a special mention to Piero Calame, who after one of the biggest passenger ship evacuations, decided to stay on the ship. Thankfully, he was convinced to get off of the ship. Unfortunately, it haunted him for the rest of his life. Are you okay, Stu? Even on his deathbed, he repeatedly asked, are the passengers off of the ship? Stu, the ambulance is coming. Thanks, Stu. Thanks, Stu. Thanks, Stu.